Hello. Today, we're talking about German cockroaches and monitoring for German cockroaches. The German cockroach has been perhaps the consummate urban pest for a long, long time. There was a time when it was it was probably the pest. Uh, the, the termites might disagree, but it's, it's what you cut your teeth on. You weren't really a pest control operator or an exterminator until you could clear a uh, greasy spoon of a of a bad cockroach problem. For those of you uh, who aren't clear, a greasy spoon is a restaurant. It's a, it's because they didn't wash their spoons well and the spoons were greasy. So they were greasy spoons. So in fact, they didn't do very many things well, but the food was inexpensive. Otherwise, never mind. If you could get the cockroaches out of there, you had shown your worth. And Somewhere, uh, in fact, er, uh, back in the early 90s, I think, some of the baiting technologies really changed the game and the tide turned. And then we spent a bunch of years thinking, wow, this is easy. Uh, anybody could do this. And German cockroaches kind of faded into the background. But it didn't take them long to figure out what to do. What we're going to do to right now is we'll jump into uh, into our presentation so we don't miss too many of the cool pictures. How about that? And off we go. Yeah, the that was the that was the way of it. That's the backstory. That's where it was. Took years, um, but they figured out what to do. And so now we have cockroaches that, oh, yeah, we got great bait and it'll kill them. They eat it. They've just decided that might not be the best idea. So they're starting to, uh, we're starting to see larger and larger German cockroach populations. Now, you know, the people are saying they're getting worse and worse. They're not. They're returning to normal. That's what they're doing. Oh, yeah. And uh, I hear stories and people talk about, oh, they were so bad they were raining off the ceiling. Yeah, that's uh, that was about par for the course back in the day. So don't feel like you're uh, living through something that, that uh, has never been seen before because it has. So what do we do? What do we do now? Well, what we'll do is we'll go back to the fundamentals. We're going to go back to the biggest key in successful cockroach control, whether it's baiting or contact residuals or anything. But first, we're going to have some cockroach comedy because if nothing else, we can make fun of cockroaches without getting in trouble. So, uh, did you hear the one about the cockroach that locked his keys in the car? It took him an hour and a half to get his wife and kids out. No. Uh, why do cockroaches live in clocks? So they're always home in time. No. Uh, why was the cockroach blushing? Because it went into the cupboard and saw the salad dressing. All right. Not, not so good, eh? We may have some better cockroach comedy later. Let's talk about the, the many different tools that we've, uh, that we've always had for cockroaches and how this all fits in we started out using baits oh yeah we started out with like arsenicals uh arsenic baits and um and a few other uh phos phosphorus paste um a few other baits were just amazing they worked uh well enough but they were dangerous and that was the problem you needed something you had to make sure the kids didn't didn't get into it because it could be bad. Then came DDT and Chloridane and everything changed. Um, everybody was, we thought we wouldn't have any, I say we, wasn't me. That was long before my time, but uh, the exterminators of the time thought their industry was done. We're going to have to do something else for a living. Didn't take cockroaches long to figure out DDT though. But 
we just need better insecticides. Well, well, perhaps we got them. There were the organophosphates and the diazinon and dersban and there were a lot of uh, insecticides that came out that worked pretty well. And we cruised along with that for the longest time until uh, they started not working so well. So we had to add in, we had to add dusts back in. So we began dusting and then uh, you would have heard, you would have heard the phrase dust is a must. Oh yeah. You're going to kill cockroaches. You better be using dusts. Much better formulation than the contact insecticides we were using still had some issues getting to all the cockroaches was the problem in fact uh you'll see in the picture an old uh an old actosol machine i i think you can get a new one but they that was designed to blow small aerosolized particles back into cracks and crevices and uh, effectively get into the deep harborage that we couldn't otherwise do and uh, that certainly helped but then and as I said earlier, the baits came along and changed everything. And all of a sudden, it was a, it was a different story. You know why that was? That was because cockroaches are better at finding food than we were at finding cockroaches. And so, man, if you got a bait that they want to eat, you're going to win. That's just how that goes. So... After that, cockroach aversion, and that brings us to now what? And so let's take a look at um, insect sticky traps, insect monitors. There are uh, some, some people, those aren't sticky traps, they're monitors, because sticky trap is too, uh, it's not sophisticated enough, but monitor is a, is a sophisticated sounding like, we can use monitors, well, I'll just use sticky traps whatever you call them, this is what you do. Uh, if if you don't have a product that can kill all the cockroaches and make it look easy, you got to go back to the fundamentals. And uh, the biggest key in controlling the cockroaches is knowing where they are. They just kind of melt into the environment and they're gone. Whatever your method of choice, proper placement of insect monitors is the key so you know where the cockroaches are so you'll be able to so you'll be able to take care of them where they're at when properly deployed um, bit of, along with inspection this gives you the clearest picture of where the population is and that's what has to happen so uh, let's look at insect monitors and the basically the four functions that they uh that they fulfill. Um, they help you with population size and scope. They help you track activity. They uh, help you indicate elimination so you know when they're gone. And they give you early detection for when they come back. Let's take a look at each of those. Uh, for the first one, um, as visible as uh, some cockroaches may be, they rely on their ability to hide, to stay out of harm's way. So uh, uh, back in their heyday, uh, when we were using insecticide sprayables or pressurized, we would say spray where they stay during the day. So people could remember, where should I, where should I treat? Where should I apply this? Back in the cracks and crevices, back where the cockroaches are. So you had to know where they were. And if you didn't, this wasn't going to work very well. Uh, cockroaches spend most of their time sitting in Harbridge, uh, biding their time. But are they doing nothing? Uh, they're contemplating how to take over the world. No, they're actually, they are hard at work doing things metabolically, but they're, uh, they're not coming out into the light. Someone would see them. So unless the population is spilling over the edges, you know, spilling over the edges, you've, you've seen that. There's when they're spilling over the edges, then okay, you don't need sticky traps to tell you where the cockroaches are. Uh, but you can never really be sure how big it is. Otherwise, sometimes you get called into a into a new place, and there are very few cockroaches to see. And they say, "Oh yeah, we've been seeing cockroaches," and you look around and you can't find any. 
But uh, as you get into it, you find more and more. And sometimes you start wondering, do they really have cockroaches? Yeah. Deep Harborage is the is the home base of the cockroach. They want to get out of the light, out of the sound, and uh, and they'll do that. So um, looking for population size, that's how many there are. Now, you're never going to know how many cockroaches are in the building, but you'll get a relative idea of the size and scope is how far they're spread. So here's our, uh, here's what I did is I, this is a representative uh, restaurant. So it's, it, uh, it may or may not be a real restaurant, but you can see where we put out the uh, monitors. And what I did was uh, um, I made a little graph. So when you go check your monitors, you can, uh, you can write down or use or use a highlighter. I always print these things off and I take a copy and I date it and then I take highlighters and and do for zeros and then lows, mediums and highs or uh, set the numbers. It really doesn't matter what you do as long as you stay consistent. So um, this is a pretty good example of what an array might look like. Now, uh, you you got an idea where to put them because you know your way around cockroaches. So uh, you want to be a little heavier where you know they're the worst. And as you can see, we did that up in the, uh, we can see this. Can we see this? There we go. Yeah. Here in the, uh, here in the kitchen. Um, and if we, uh, if we mark these cockroaches, these uh, insect sticky traps, these monitors uh, red, if they have 10 or more, and then yellow if they have uh, six to ten, maybe it's orange. Is that yellow or orange? I think I think it's I think it's probably yellow. Uh, you can see where all the cockroaches are, can't you? They are all in the kitchen and they're leaking out into the serving area, but we don't see them very much in the uh, um, where the tables are, where the customers are. Although uh, right down there, we've got. We got one. So we can only imagine how that happened. But as you look at this, this gives you um, this gives you an idea of what scope is all about. Um, so we can, we know that there's a lot of them in the kitchen and we see that they're relatively confined to the kitchen. So we got an idea. Is this a big, bad problem? Yeah, but it's limited um, into the kitchen. That doesn't mean that we aren't going to be uh, putting our controls all over the place and without without respect to what you use for controls. Um, let's see. So um, how many you put out? That's not science. Um, where they're the worst, we put out the most. You probably don't want to crowd them. I think four or five feet apart is close enough although you might decide oh no we need to be a couple of feet apart and there may need to be because there might be something dividing them so it's always good to know where uh where the cotton the cockroaches will tell you the trap catch will tell you what's uh what's important and what's not um so get a good array and you you get them out there and then what you need to do is uh, check them on a very regular schedule. Cockroaches, I've done pretty well with once a week. Um, especially if you're if you're using baits, you don't need to follow up any more than that. If you're using contact insecticides, you might want to go twice a week. But whichever way it is, try and get it as regular as you can. So what the monitors tell you um, will be similar. So if it's two days worth or seven days worth, it's always the same. And that's what you want. You want it to be consistent. Um, so once you've got size and scope, what else does it do? It um, tracks activity. And uh, I said it tracks activity. Oh, dear. Nope. 
Um, we're, uh, yeah, we're, hang on. I am not without, there we go. I am not without, uh, not without resources. I know what to do. Here we go. Second of four functions of tracking activity. Is it working? See, uh, it's looking much better, isn't it? We used to have lots of reds and yellows in the kitchen. Now we only have one red. We have uh, six yellows and four blue. Oh, notice I changed the I changed the uh, um I changed the scale uh, instead of like one to six, six to ten. Few, some, lot. That's because it doesn't matter what the numbers are, as long as they make sense to you. So you can uh, you can make that a series of numbers, um, and you can you just need the you need the colors to tell you how this is working. So as you can see, uh, we're doing much better, and uh, sometimes you can you can see the success uh, in some areas and failures in others. Oh, yeah, you might see this, that the cockroaches are going down way down in one area, but they're starting to get heavier in another, or they're not moving at all in another, which might mean there's something you don't know. That is the magic of monitoring. Tell you that. Uh, we can see here that the control measures are working pretty well, but we still have some more work to do. So uh, the third function tells you when you're done. And this is the, are we there yet? Uh, long after employees begin to tell you, we don't see any more. There's still cockroaches there. The last ones to see cockroaches are going to be the insect monitors uh, all the way down to the last cockroach. I've, I've never seen it otherwise, even in uh, counts where none of us could find a cockroach. The last cockroach was caught in a monitor, last one you see. So uh, this helps you uh, indicate extinction, tells you when you're at zero. Um, now, just because it's all zeros, the first time you go in and it's all zeros, may not be an elimination yet. It may, there may still, so I always wait for that second set. Some people wait for the third. Not really, um, it, there's no science behind it because you don't know. You're just monitoring. But when you get all the zeros, that's when you know. I I think, I think we got them. So, and they can, uh, they can document zero, uh, zero cockroach conditions. Why is that important to document zero cockroach conditions? Well... A lot of times you get a call, you get a frantic call from a client who's got a restaurant and they found a cockroach and somebody found a cockroach in their soup or somewhere. And if you can go back and say, you know, we have uh, we had a lot of monitors all over the place. We haven't we haven't seen a cockroach in your restaurant in six months now. It's pretty safe to say. If it happened, it's a one-off. If you ask us, we don't think they're yours. That begs the question, well, <laughs> whose are they? Oh, cockroaches can come in, uh, but that's why you want your uh, that's why you want your your insect monitors out there is for early detection. Here we go. All right, yeah, they're back. Um, when they kind and where they show up is important. In this particular uh, graph, we show you a. There's a place in the kitchen where they're where they're showing up, which suggests maybe employees, it may be incoming stock, and frequently it's incoming stock. But if the uh, if the the one cockroach that was found was uh, in the dining area, that may be uh, brought in by brought in by customers. I wonder if those are the same customers who found one in their soup. I don't. 
that the idea is when they come back and they will come back, you want to be the first to know. Generally, it's the monitors that are first that are the first to know. So if somebody records a cockroach and you go through and you check all the monitors, um, you'll know if there's none there yet there's been one recorded. It's probably more likely that that one came in very recently. You you could be pretty confident with. Uh, I don't think you got them yet. They'll show up in the monitors. All right. Uh, a little more cockroach comedy. Uh, so ambulance comes screaming in. The EMTs arrive at the door. Guy answers with a with a cockroach in his hand. Says, this cockroach is, is about to have babies. Take it to the hospital and step on it. A little better. <laughs> All right. Let's look at some principles of using uh, insect sticky traps, using insect monitors. The first one is you got to choose the correct monitor. There's a lot of different kinds out there. Generally, they work as sticky traps. There's a lot of way to, ways to catch cockroaches, you know, Um they can be uh, they can be easily lured in on a number of things. Um, when I was in school, they always thought the best way to do uh, cockroaches was beer and bread, and so you'd put beer and bread into a into a one um, one pint mason jar and uh, just put some um, pencils or sticks up to the top grease the rim they would come and jump in and couldn't get out great way to catch cockroaches pretty tough for us we have these great sticky traps and there's a lot of them that are out there now so what kind do you use well you've got a balance between how many of these am i going to use cost uh, may be a factor not a huge factor when you look at the cost of um gaining control and you can do it much quicker. There's no reason to scrimp on the cost of the sticky traps. The little triangular fold sticky traps are outstanding for cockroaches. But if you're going to do something like apartments, you may want a larger. Uh, you may want a larger sticky trap, M mostly because they can f they can fill those things. And it's uh, if you put out a a number of of the smaller insect monitors in a number of apartments, um, and you put them all in the same spot, put one under behind the refrigerator, and one under the sink, and you may put uh, you may put one in the bathroom, maybe not. And then you come back and look. If you use the small ones, and you come back and they're all full, then you know they got them. But if you use the larger uh, the larger insect monitors or leave leave three of the small ones together so you get a bigger glue space then you start to see that they're not really full some are full some are slap full can't fit another cockroach on there others that's pretty heavy around the around the edges others well there's a few on it so now you start to get a gradation and you can sort them out that way it's always a good thing to do so you make the decision as to what you want to be able to use. Some people use mouse glue boards just because they're they're big enough and they got a lot of glue. It doesn't take a lot of glue to catch a cockroach. That's that is for sure. But you do have to choose um, the correct monitor. And uh, large areas um, are best served with small monitors. So you got a you've got a, an industrial kitchen. Don't put out lots of big monitors, put out lots of small monitors and uh, spread them out. So it'll help you focus where the cockroaches that are caught in them have come from. Principles of using insect monitors. Use enough monitors. It's, uh, um, there is no hard and fast rule we talked about that there's no science that says how many you have to put there uh but 
uh, you put down what you think is right. You'll get good at this after a while if you aren't good already. Um, every four or five feet seems pretty good. Where you know the population's the worst, that's where you'll want to have them concentrated. And you'll want to have enough so you can see the entire area of infestation when you uh, when you do a floor plan, when you do a map, you draw it out, graph this thing, you'll you'll see, oh yeah, here's where the cockroaches are. We saw that in our uh, in our restaurant. Um, you want to be able to go all the way to the edges of the population. What you don't want to do is uh, is uh, when you get your trap catch data back and you don't know where this thing ends. You know it's here and you know it's there, but you don't know where it ends. You need more monitors. So um, use enough monitors. Um, use the right monitor, use enough monitors, and uh, replace them all every time. So when you go to service, um, pick up all the old ones, put down new ones. Uh, once a week, yeah. I know if you got zeros, it's um, some some people re really don't want to throw away a perfectly good insect monitor. There's hasn't even been hasn't even caught anything yet, but it's been out for a week. And as they're out there, they'll lose their ability to catch insects. They won't lose it in a week. But you want to be able to date these things. You want trackable activity. The very best way to do it is to uh, uh, number and date your number and date your your insect monitors. In fact, I think you can see these are uh, numbered and dated, and uh, that way you know when they were put out and you know where they came from because you got a map that shows you. Otherwise, if it gets moved. Then it become then it becomes just a just a a random monitor. Where'd this come from? Well, it could have come from a bunch of places. If you only have one out of place, you know where it came from. If a whole bunch of them are out of place and you don't know where they went and you find one, it's very difficult to say, oh, this one must be over by the uh, by the stand mixer. Can't tell. So number them. Um also, you should note that uh, when you uh, pick them all up and you record what you've taken, you should you should keep both the numbers of the adults and the numbers of the nymphs. Um, that'll come into play later. Um, depending on whether they're catching nymphs or adults will make a difference. You'll find that in the beginning, catch mostly adults. At the end, you're catching only nymphs. It's the way that works. Now, uh, the other thing is watch for gravid females. I don't know if you need to note them, but you sure will want to watch for them. When females are developing an egg case, they have a what? Well, they have a habit of of um, secluding themselves back in wall voids, and they just sit there and they don't do anything but develop egg cases, and so you don't see them. And uh, that takes a couple of weeks, and then they uh, drop the egg case, which of course <clears throat> hatches uh, hatches out about oh what three dozen, give or take, and then they come out and haven't eaten in a few weeks. They are ready to go, so they're out looking for food, and they get seen. And if you've ever heard clients go, "I think you're just feeding them," <laughs> that's what that's about. You've got gravid females, so they're the they're the biggest cockroaches you'll find. Is the the big females? They start coming out. People just puts them off their feed, and you got to say, "No, actually, uh, we are feeding them, but it's not making them bigger. These are just these are just females coming out looking for uh, looking for something to eat after having a lot of babies. Having a lot of babies. Oh yeah. Um, okay, so. Use the right ones, put out enough, replace them all every time. Um, do not add or subtract monitors. What you put out, leave out. Um, if, if you go changing this, it's going to change the meaning of your numbers. So if you went through and, oh, yeah, we removed a bunch of these because they weren't catching anything. 
um, you'll you'll just end up confusing your effort. Uh, the most important number in trap catch activity is not a number. It's zero. That is the most important thing you can write down. Zero. Not any. And, uh, oh yeah, math fans, zero isn't a number. It's the absence of numbers. So, is negative one a number? It's less than zero. I could never keep that straight. But, I can tell you, zeros are what you're looking for. Always good to have zeros somewhere on the chart. That way you can see where the cockroaches are and where they are not. And uh, if you start um, adding or subtracting, um, you won't have zeros if you remove them all. The other thing is if you uh, if you add them, well, we were filling them up, so we added them. <laughs> what you're not going to do, you are um, you are not going to catch all the cockroaches. There's a, um, I think there's science behind this. It is very difficult to use traps to catch all the cockroaches. You can catch all the mice, but you can't catch all the cockroaches. <clears throat> Same reason you can't, uh, can't introduce a predator that will go eat all the cockroaches. It just doesn't happen. So, uh, if you put in, um, if you put in more more monitors thinking well we'll catch more cockroaches all you'll do is uh confuse the numbers and then so we're catching more does that mean there's more no well it means you're catching more doesn't it um best to leave things where they are that is not to say you have to leave things where they are it's just sound practice so Make your own decisions. If you uh, if you had a reason for adding one, that, that I suppose. But as a rule, once you once you got them out, that's what's going to tell you. And consistency is so important in the in the information you get back from insect monitors. So you're checking them on a very even interval. If it's every seven days, every six days, every eight days, but Right around every seven days, you got to keep it that way. If you go back two days later and check, you're going to find you you caught a lot fewer. You need to catch the same week's worth so you can compare it to the weeks before that. It's important. Other principles. Focus on primary harborages. Primary harborages are those places that have everything a cockroach wants. They... um. Um, we used to direct, uh, we used to direct folks to the three W's that's wood, water, and warmth. Oh yeah. Wood because wood absorbs odors and cockroaches are very, um, they're very odor oriented. So they're very up on what things smell like wood, cardboard, about the same, um water because they're very tightly tied to water in fact water is as important as uh um as food you would you would think um they need a lot of water and warmth they do like it where it's warm so if you've got a place that is uh got a lot of wood or absorptive surfaces and there's a lot of water and there's a lot of warmth that's primary harborage for German cockroaches, and they are likely to be there. So, uh, in just about any place you go, there's always one place that's best. Cockroaches may get started elsewhere, but they'll find the primary harborages before long and set up shop. And when they're done and you've eliminated them all, the odors that they've left behind will tell others this is a primary harborage and so they'll be back oh yeah so secondary harborages are uh, places where they can stay that maybe not quite so good not so close to water maybe a little cooler um maybe it's a uh, stainless steel uh, they'll sit on stainless steel 
but they don't like it. Uh, they'll sit on uh, plastic, but they don't like it. You know, when you look under the fryer and everything is covered with a thin layer of grease, because when the when the when the fries go in the hot in the hot grease and you get little aerosolized droplets and it just kind of covers everything. They wipe down. They're sp- supposed to wipe down the surfaces that you see, but they don't always clean the surfaces that you don't. So when you look underneath, everything is kind of sticky and nasty and covered with uh, fats, oils, and greases. Cockroaches don't like that any more than you do. And uh, they don't sit on that unless they have to. That's why you see them piled into places that don't have that uh, don't have that that covering. They can eat a lot of that grease, although not good for you, not good for them. Um, they're actually uh, hunting up proteins more they more than the uh, more than the fats, oils, and greases you find around. So primary harbages will be close to some good proteins also. Secondary harmages, not so much. So you got so you're under the fryer. It's warm. That's good. Uh it's all sticky. It's no really good place to stand. And there's not a lot of really good food. That's a secondary harborage. And then there's tertiary harborages, which don't have much anything, but this is the the only place left. And then when the population gets so big, then it's overflowed and they're they're everywhere they're they're running around all over and you just, you just never know where you're going to where you're going to find them so you want to you want to focus these things um in primary harborages uh out of the way out of the light cuz they don't like light and you don't want you don't want your harbor your harborages you don't want your monitors to be very visible and uh, if you're the only one who knows where they are, probably better that way. So people aren't overly concerned about them or looking at them or have them out of sight. Um, ISDs are, they need to be back in, um, back in cracks and crevices, back up underneath things, uh, up against lines, because cockroaches generally prefer lines. So don't leave them out in the middle of a, of an expanse have them on an edge that's where you'll get more cockroaches that way <clears throat> and uh um focus on the primary harbages don't ignore the others remember we want a ring of zeros so you want to be able to move out and put them everywhere but make sure that they're uh that they're focused on primary harborages they want to be uh um uh, you want them you want insect monitors to be like hippies up tight out of sight and in the groove oh yeah for those of you who remember hippies so uh now finally uh principles um dated distributed and deployed you should date them the more you put out the more often they're going to disappear and uh they may show up later hey look what i found <laughs> if you got a date on it you're going to know where it's from or when it's from anyway so you know how old it is that's from 2 years ago it'll be important um if you date them you'll be happy you did you should number them so you know right where they came from it doesn't take long you're dating them anyways you might as well just write it on there so it's always uh it's not always best I always like to have them dated and numbered before I go in because I got a I got a plan. I got a I've got a graph, a a map, so I can see where they're all at. And uh um so I want to do that ahead of time. Then it's just a matter of going through and picking them up, recording what's on the uh insect monitors and putting out the new ones. They're properly um numbered. You can just put them in a bag and put the new ones out and count them back at the shop. And you can do that. Although you got to be careful that you don't, that you don't squish the cockroaches in there because 
then you would never know. Then you'd have to you'd have to peel them apart, and um, that wouldn't be good. Make sure you get your numbers dated, distributed, and deployed. You got to make make sure you pull you pull the the release paper off the glue and uh, properly uh, properly placed where they won't get dislodged. Uh, if you use the kind of monitors that have the little glue on the backside, so it looks like you can just stick them someplace. I don't have a great a great deal of confidence uh, in the, in that glue, so I like to make sure that when we put them down, they're down, and uh, they're not gonna they're not gonna end up end up gone. All right. Uh, cockroach comedy. Um, little girl had a had a cockroach as a pet. It was uh, like, a, like a Madagascar hissing cockroach, and and she named it George, and uh, she loved it, and she carried it everywhere. Uh, she had a little home for it, and she kept that by her bed. And uh, she would have tea parties and she took it on adventures every day. And uh, one morning she came running into her mother, just tears streaming out of her eyes. George is dead. Look at George, he's dead. Um, her mother tried to comfort her, but she would not be consoled. Uh, she dragged around the house all day. Crying, sitting on her bed, staring at George in his little home. And just so her mother came in and said, why don't we have a funeral for George? And began to suggest all the nice things they could do for the funeral. They cleaned the house and made decorations. They baked cookies. And her father made, made a, little, uh, a little coffin with a little pillow and a little nameplate, George, uh, and they set out candles and they had a memory board. You know, those boards you had the pictures of like when you were a little, that kind of stuff. Uh, and they invited all her friends uh, and all George's friends. And uh, they, uh, they waited. Uh, and the morning came for the funeral. And after breakfast, she went to get, she went to get George and, uh, Put him in the uh, put him in the coffin, and there he was, freshly molted, all white, waving his antennae around. And her mother says, "Oh look, George is alive after all." And the little girl looks around and she sees the decorations and the candles and the chairs that are all set out and she sees guests are starting to arrive and she says let's kill it no all right okay follow-up visits they won't um they won't give up because you tried hard Cockroaches, you got to kill them or they won't go away. That's the, that is the simple truth of it. <clears throat> One of the most common mistakes is quitting too soon, uh, which we have here is a, is a typical, this is a typical curve. If you were to take all the numbers you got and made a graph, this is what it would look like. And uh, this is just simply a weekly graph of the numbers taken every week. And as you can see, um, starting with the hundreds, we go down to uh, we go down to zero, and you can see when this thing flatlines. Um, it now it may be longer or shorter in some uh, in some accounts. Incidentally, um, the worse the sanitation is, the longer this tail becomes. So if the place is just absolutely awful. Um, this may go way long before you get to zero. You'll be at very few cockroaches, but you won't be to zero for a long time. So 
they have a role. You have a role in pest control. That's what we used to say. Uh, to get people to cooperate and to clean up. Well, uh, that shows you how, how cleanup will work. What's important, though, is that you maintain your focus all the way till you're in zeros. If if you stop because the cockroaches are way down, oh, yeah, we're hardly getting anything. You know, they, uh, they're good with that. They'll build the numbers back up and it comes back up pretty quickly. It's really a really an amazing thing how uh, how fast that population is going to rebound if you let them up for air. So don't do that. You got to you got to keep um, keep following up. Stay on them until you see this thing go to all zeros. Now, um, you, you follow up by assessing your uh uh, your progress. This is a good curve. This looks good. See, we're going way down and we're staying way down now. Somewhere along here, this was probably a bad day for somebody. I, I don't know, man, we're starting to go back up. But you know, um, if you're at that point, I'm all assuming that you can see the screen and you can see the cursor floating around this little uh, uptick in cockroach numbers that happened uh approximately seven seven or eight weeks out um you don't always know why or how that happened and the bigger the populations are the easier it is in fact uh we can tell from our scale here can't we see this if this is 50 then this looks like this is about oh what'd you say 35 to 42 that is not a big difference but it's an uptick um so sometimes the best thing to do is to remain calm and see if this is a trend or an anomaly or a one-timer, a one-off, and follow it through. As long as everything's working, stay the course. Uh, if things aren't working, if you think we should be we should be much lower by now, then it's time to make some changes. And you can make changes a lot of different ways. Uh, in some cases, change baits or... Uh, um or add or add baits you could do two two different two different baits but that gets complicated but you could do that um the idea is do you have cockroaches here who aren't eating your bait you know they got cockroaches the first time i wonder how that happened and when you came in here they were pretty bad when you work every day in a place where the cockroaches are pretty bad you know what it's a pretty good bet you're going to take them home now i'm not worried about you you're pest management professionals but if you were um if you were the dishwasher or a waiter or a waitress or the maitre d you might not be quite so observant you might end up taking cockroaches home and getting them in your apartment or in your house, and now they're bad. Well, not right away, but after uh, after a few months of not noticing, cockroaches can get bad. And if you live in a place where the cockroaches are bad and you go to work, you're going to take some in every day or every other day. You'll take them in. If that's happening there's an opportunity for cockroaches to be loaded back in to uh, into a restaurant. Now, remember how you check to make sure your bait's working or that you chose an active ingredient that you know is uh, effective on these cockroaches. You may be dealing with a different population. There's a lot of reasons this can happen. So don't be afraid to try new baits or add uh, add some other products in there. Maybe dust some voids. Dusts are a must. Dust can be very effective at dealing with cockroaches. So these are the uh, these are the principles. Maybe you want to uh, to do a reset. Maybe remember I said don't don't change anything. Maybe you want to just shift the traps around. See if you still catch. See see what, how things are going. You need to to uh, manage the process. Um, based on your best judgment, 
Sometimes all you got to do is change things up a little bit. Sometimes all you got to do is be patient. Sometimes you got to go there during the day and just watch things happen. Just sit in the back. Yeah. Um, I don't know that a technician would ever do that. I would have never done that as a technician. But if I was somebody trying to solve a problem and it was inexplicable, I would do that. I would go see what things look like during the day. Sometimes um, the most important things aren't talked about. So um, as you follow up, watch the curve decline. If it's not declining, you need more information. You may need to change some things up. But in most cases, you can you can you can make that happen and make that go. So in conclusion, it's insect monitors that that keep you from working blind, that keep you so you know where the cockroaches are. Um, it's always best to know the answers before you ask the questions. And man, insect monitors can certainly do that. The more you know about the population, the more efficient you're going to be at achieving elimination and you can achieve elimination. Oh no, you can never get rid of these cockroaches. You know, as long as they're not coming in on a regular basis, you should be able to get to zero. Best way to manage resistance, kill them all. Oh yeah. Uh, you don't develop resistance or uh, bait, um, bait aversion or any of that unless you're only killing some of the cockroaches or most of the cockroaches. Kill them all, you'll do well. Now, uh, there are operations where they have cockroaches coming in regularly. You won't get to zero. There will always be new ones, and you won't be able to tell the difference between uh, introduced cockroaches and and uh, cockroaches that grew up there, immigrant and uh, and um, immigrant cockroaches and what's that word that means that they always live there? Whatever that word is, those kinds of cockroaches. Oh yeah. Um, oh, also, it may be uh, if your environment, your account is not a freestanding building, but one of many buildings, there may be cockroaches next door. They may be coming from a couple doors down. They may be coming from a number of places. There's a lot of things that can happen. The insect monitors will help you. If you've got a good array out, you'll know. Keep it going. Keep track of them and uh, maintain a, a, a sustained effort with well-placed monitor yields the best possible uh, efficient control. Uh, at this point, um, questions are going to be done uh, live. So there's a live session for uh, questions and answers. And uh, look forward to seeing you there. <laughs>